Hello and welcome to Anywhere But Here podcast, episode 298. My name's Ant. You can find us at abhpod.com. Uh, on that page there is an Amazon banner. If you click on that Amazon banner, it will take you through to amazon.co.uk. Uh, if you do a little bit of shopping, we get a 5% kickback. Uh, it doesn't change your shopping experience at all. Uh, it just like I say, it gives us a bit of a kickback um, to help us pay hosting fees. Next to that Amazon banner, there is also a Patreon banner uh, for as little as a dollar a month or a single unit of your currency. But you will get extra content such as uh, After the Podcast podcasts, which are exclusive to our Patreon supporters. You get uh, spoiler casts when we record them. You don't have to wait for them to go out on our main feed. Uh, they go out uh, along with the main episodes without this intro uh, to a special RSS feed that you can import into your podcast app uh, and they just get delivered to you uh, as we release them so you don't have to remember to go and look for them. We also do YouTube content every so often. Our Patreon supporters will get early access to those as well. We are also on other social media sites. We're on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash abhpod. We are on Twitter at abhpod. Um, as I say, we're on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash ABH podcast. Uh, you can also get in contact with us via email, abhpod at gmail.com. As you may be able to tell, Tom is not joining us on this episode. He's uh, unfortunately had a bit of bad news in his family, so we're sending our love out to Tom and his family. Uh, yeah, and they're in our thoughts. As Tom isn't here, I put out the call, uh, and as always, Andrew Bartlett. Um, long time friend of the podcast multiple times guests and uh this episode is actually co-hosting the podcast with me uh, we discuss a lot of things he brought with him a, a, a new story about his area uh, literally down the road from him uh, we talk films we talk marvel we talk sports weirdly very briefly uh we just have a general catch-up um, but first um if you've noticed the date you'll know what's coming next enjoy Happy 4th of July, Andrew. Yay. Yay. Is Yay. that something you're excited about? Not necessarily. I mean, I've never really been a big, I mean, not to sound unpatriotic or anything, but yeah. uh, I'm I'm just not a fan of fireworks and people thinking that they can just light them off like any old time aside from the day before. Um, I live yeah. right down, I, I live about eight minutes from downtown right and and i mean and this is the south so to speak i mean and you know people just love blowing stuff up i mean i'm surprised that there hasn't been a a news story about someone killing themselves or starting a fire with a uh, Mm. gender reveal party down here just you know just (laughs) that that whole thing but uh yeah yeah. you know there's this weird culture now where it's like you know when you make a joke where it's like oh it's my birthday month um yeah. and you're just like i'm celebrating every day apparently that mindset has transferred to other holidays where it's like oh it's fourth of july month so oh they yeah. sell fireworks at you know on in the, at the end of june and so oh well i've got these so i can go ahead and use them you know i yeah. have a, i have a cat so you know we've got different areas we've got like a park down the road where people set off fireworks and so i came home last night and just had to deal with a freaked out kitty and so it's going to go out the next couple days or so so yay, yeah thanks it's, it is weird. And to be and, and and you know working in retail and myself having worked in retail you know that holidays do span like um mm-hmm. yeah increasingly longer periods of time like you know i, I yeah. mean we we don't do thanksgiving so you know you you, you have when is thanksgiving is that no it's the it's like the third for us it's the third uh thursday oh. in the month of november so it november, it's one of those yeah. days where yeah it's one of those days where it just it you ah. keep shifting depending on like when that thursday lands <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah so it's it's a bit odd because we have halloween which isn't a huge thing over here anyway but we have halloween and then it's like the first of november it's christmas you know, right because mm-hmm. we don't have thanks thanksgiving in the middle to break that up so i, I imagine right. for you it's like after thanksgiving it's then christmas well i mean even like starting in the middle of september it's christmas uh yeah, you get the people that you know, earlier, it's, isn't it? yeah. yeah i it's, mean it's the whole 
at, at some point we're going to get back like we're going to you know christmas at easter or christmas in april and yeah, we're yeah. going to we're going to we're going to get back to where christmas in december yeah, um, it's that's just, just December, how yeah. the culture is and, except you know, we're, this, we're celebrating next year's christmas in this december exa- yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah <laughs> but, but at least we'll, it's we'll, in the right month <laughs> exactly that's that, that's the whole thing cuz i mean i was thinking about it the other day it's uh, you know retail and customer service in that whole aspect is so weird as far as far as where the seasons are concerned. So it's mm-hmm. winter and we've already got our swimsuits out because we want to be the first that you purchase your your swimsuits from you know, so that you're prepared for mm-hmm. when when it actually does get warmer. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jesus but the day after warmer. summer ends, you're not you know, it's still warm oh, no, but I it's mean, not summer anymore, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean we're already clearancing out. I mean we we we're just going into July and we're already marking down the swimsuits and and it's moving nice. into the cold weather stuff, and it's just like, ugh. but I tell you, you mentioning fireworks and things like that. It, it's one of those strange things over here. We do do the fireworks. Do do the fireworks. I sound. <laughs> it's one of those. Let's do I've had fireworks. one of those. Let's just do the fireworks. I've had one of those sort of like weeks where it's nothing makes sense. I don't know where my head is. Um, <laughs> How do you words? That's it. How do words? Good. Um, but yeah, fireworks over here is one of the because uh, I know you, in the states, obviously each state has its own laws on fireworks. Some you're allowed, some you're not. And and I think possibly because you're in a state where you are allowed to set off fireworks, people make the most of it. Um, and well, but, there, there there are certain laws about like purchasing fireworks. Yes. So we're at, we're north we're the north of the Carolinas, and it's yeah. illegal to have certain types of fireworks. But in the south of the Carolinas it's legal to purchase certain types. So people will travel south, purchase the fireworks, and then bring them back up here. Yeah, and so it's not illegal to set them off and own them in the north, right. but it's illegal to buy them <laughs> <laughs> or sell them, I should say. Uh, yeah, we, the UK, it's just like fireworks, have fireworks. But right. <laughs> obviously you've got an age, they're age limited. Um, mm. you, like, you know, I couldn't send Chloe out to buy like the big. But uh, <laughs> the thing that that's strange over here now is you go to, I mean, over here, every shop will sell them, essentially. So you go to a supermarket, you they have a fireworks counter mm-hmm. that's set up like a month before like New Year's when, or, or, or the 5th of November, which is when they're the two times of year that we will set off fireworks. Right. Um, but the fireworks counter will be there a month before and a month after because we've got this huge stash of fireworks that we need to sell and they sell them cheap. <laughs> but... I remember when I was young, you would go buy fireworks and they'd be these awful little pathetic little things because you know, right. <laughs> you're setting them off in your garden, you need to be safe. Now it's just like you you buy these fireworks and it's like, uh, don't be standing within 25 meters of this firework. Right. Like the, <laughs> they're selling... Don't be in the same zip code as them. <laughs> that's it. They are selling display fireworks for domestic use now. And in the UK especially, we don't have that much land. So our gardens are like... 10 meters long that's it that's all we've got uh so, so you like, just chuck them in your neighbor's lawn you that's just it you, you set them off from your neighbor's hey garden but yeah uh we but we don't you say like uh you have people setting them off in the local park like we're not allowed to set them off local sort of spaces which i imagine is probably the same where you are but people don't oh, care yeah. Um, yeah but yeah we have that thing where people will so traditionally you get them for new year's uh, but people will be setting them off early because they brought fireworks we'll set them off but it's not a lot it's one or two here and there and then after new year's people will continue to set them off and it's just like it's one night you're supposed to set them off but people are setting them off all the time at least if it's one night you can sort of make sure you're there with your pet and you can look after your pet yeah and it's just the fact like with the rockets that get set off like you wake up in the morning and you'll have you're like i didn't set off fireworks why have i got the remains of like three rockets in my you know in my garden Uh i don't understand because they just come down just land wherever they want (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay that's that's comforting Uh, Yeah, yeah but yeah i mean i I'm not a fan of fireworks in the sense, like you say, where people are just setting them off all the time. Mm-hmm. But I do love a firework display. <laughs> I mean, there it's very. I mean, it's very pretty. And if you if you set it up in a certain way, where you know it, it's it's set safe it to music. and and yeah, and I, I, I do love going to the displays, like the 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 big sort of 
ones mm-hmm. where you pay to enter and they have like and they'll be going off for 10 15 minutes and they're set to music I, the last one i went to was it was set to um film soundtracks mm-hmm. or disney specifically disney, disney. yeah i, I remember you like, talking about that I, I was amazed it was amazing yeah when i was just sat on the floor watching them just in a world of my own or in a world of Walt disney's um but yeah a, par- it was, a part of that world i was a part of that world yeah why did i miss that that's the, anyway yeah <laughs> how did i miss that i was a part of that world <laughs> Like I say, my mind's not here at all. But yeah, I get you. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely, yeah, I'm a fan of firework displays. I'm not bothered about setting them off in my own garden. Like, but, right. Yeah. But, well, it's funny because, you know, when I was younger and, you know, that there there are jokes abounds about it, but, you know, the, the quintessential fireworks were the sparklers and the mm-hmm. snakes, the little, you know, black pellets that, you know, and like, I just remember, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just, yeah. I just remember, being young enough to be like all right we're gonna stack all these together we're gonna get a mega snake and it was just you know just nope it was just and then it would fall over and then it, the other five wouldn't catch fire no. because that's not how science works no <laughs> that, that, that was exactly when when i was talking about the when i was younger and the fireworks that you used to get with a, the home fireworks like suitable for domestic use, yeah it was the snake that is that's the yeah. one that always i always remember <laughs> Just just comes out, <laughs> falls over. That's it. It's done. And then and then when you're trying to clean it up, it's just it's just ash. That's all it is. It's just oh, yeah. ash. And you're you know it's just, oh yeah oh now I've got it soot all over my my fingers. That's great. I, I don't know if it was the same over there, but the the snake specifically I remember over here was marketed as an indoor firework. Like it may. I mean yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was advertised. I mean people will do what they'll do with them, but it was. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think it was specific. I mean, we, we don't have the weather over here, so it's like it's specifically an indoor firework. That's what it was marketed <laughs> as. <laughs> it's just like, a, hmm? just yeah. yeah. All right. Look at okay. this this little pellet of gunpowder that I'm just going to set light to in my house. Um, that would that would be a great Darwin Award, though. You know, oh, just you know, just sure. set set off an indoor snake firework. Just, yeah. You know, somehow burn their house down. I'm That's sure it, I'm sure it has ruined a carpet or a piece of furniture or a table somewhere. Right. <laughs> Just permanent black circle on the table. Yeah. Oh dear. It's a me. great story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of snakes, you sent a story. You there like you that. Go. You like that. That's you did a... send us a story. Um, yeah. To, to to discuss. And I had a, a brief look, but I didn't particularly want to spoil it. But I get the gist of it. And it's it's from your neck of the woods isn't it specifically... i mean literally specifically like down the road from where i live oh, really? i mean it, it, yeah it was it was it was so funny because earlier in the week um i was i was at work and or i had i've been uh i've recently transitioned into a new position at work and oh, okay. my my schedule is a lot more sporadic now but mostly i work earlies and so um uh, i've become a coffee drinker now just to help with that but uh <laughs> but uh yeah, it's, yeah. it's worked out you know it, it, it's it's increased my days but uh i uh woke up early went into work and the tv in the break room had the local news on and there was a live feed breaking news uh venomous dangerous king cobra or whatever loose in raleigh neighborhood and i'm just like i'm sorry what <laughs> and <laughs> I I was out and about and there was a snake on the loose and yeah. apparently not only like a king cobra insanely venomous but apparently spits like what and uh, <laughs> spits so the venom. It doesn't even have to bite you <laughs> and no it's just like you know oh you're you're over there <laughs> you know yeah. there there have that you know I'm not I'm not going over there but apparently it's like a big thing too and so you know, just every now and then go back to the break room. Did they catch the snake yet? Okay, well, I guess I'm not going home until they catch the snake because <laughs> I don't even know where this damn thing is. And because uh, knowing my luck, I mean, I probably would have walked right by it and not even known. It. Do, 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 do. And uh, but yeah, it took several hours, like late into the evening, mm. uh, for for authorities and animal control to finally catch it. But uh, you know, they it was it was really interesting just to watch and to find out that apparently the snake would belong to some known tiktoker who is yeah. 
main platform is uh having all of these exotic animals and it's like uh no like i have a cat yeah, yeah. that's all i need yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I never understand <laughs> as exotic as it's gonna get yeah i mean i do i i i like i don't know what to say like is a strong word but like snakes and things i, I do i'm not scared necessarily but i think that comes from living in the uk and we don't have venomous things that can kill you right. in this country um <laughs> We're quite we're quite happy and we're quite proud of that fact. But I mean, they do exist in this country because people import them and keep them in, right. in the same way mm -hmm. this guy does. But I've never been one to see a snake and be like, "Oh, that, that's like." You know, I think they're quite. What's the word? What's the word? They're not cute, but you know what I mean. Like, I, I like neat. the way they're, they're interesting, they're, yeah. and there's 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 a certain aesthetic to them. And but yeah, like you can appreciate I, I would, it if if there was a king cobra loose like within like a mile of where i work or live there's yeah no i'd, I'd probably have the same thing as you it's like turn turn the automatic um, doors off the automatic doors yeah. turn them off we have to let people in um you can just imagine <laughs> like if you're like well uh, what's the likelihood right it's very no i'm not gonna see it so i get in my car drive home look in the rearview mirror there's just a snake just peering like, at me through the hey, mirror. You, can you make a left on here? <laughs> yeah. I gotta get. I gotta pick up some things. Can you drop yeah, me yeah. off at the store? Yeah, I need to go home. <laughs> uh, just yeah, just imagining that snake just peeking at you in the rear. <laughs> but uh, that's weird. I mean, it, I, I assume this guy is licensed and knows what he's doing. Well, you would. You would hope, clearly not I mean, because it escaped. But <laughs> right. I mean, and sometimes those things will happen. But again, it. It. it I mean, you. You, you'll hear stories of people, I mean, not around here, uh, mm. but, you know, there was one, I think, last month of a Bengal tiger, you know, running loose in a neighborhood. Yeah. It's like, why? Why, why do you have one? Oh. <laughs> uh, actually, like, in yeah. this, in the town that I live in, Maystone, uh, there's a little, I don't, I don't know what to call them, they're like districts, regions in the town mm -hmm. uh, called Tovel, and there was a, it's a really nice valley, but there was a guy that lived there like really rich big house but he kept tigers he had tigers this guy just had them in his garden you could be sort of i, I remember like a cycle pass and i can just hear them sort of in his guard like in the cages like growling and roaring I'm, what if that escaped like what right is it made like it, it may sound like this town it's, it's not known for having these like african creatures yet <laughs> yet no. it's just bizarre that people decide to like i i love them like um like I, I quite often when you're watching wildlife programs and you see lions and tigers i i love cats so to see these giant yeah. cats and their paws specifically that what, what what i refer to as toe beans the yeah big yeah toe exactly beans, like, they're, they're huge yeah Oh, I just, look, it's just a, a big version of the thing that I have in my house. And yeah, yeah, but you know if that thing in your house was bigger, it would probably try to eat you. The yeah, only reason exactly. it doesn't try to eat you is because it's smaller than you. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Midnight will will try every once in a while. Oh, he yeah, gets yeah. rambunctious, and he's just like, I'm going to try, ah, oh, your finger, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, that's, 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 you know, generations and generations of, you know, your original <laughs> programming <laughs> coming out. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> bite me if you need to. But <laughs> let's resist the domestication <laughs> programming. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Yeah, apparently I, I, I've still got a mouse loose in my house somewhere. Like, that's about, oh, as really? exotic, <laughs> about as exotic as it gets. I, I don't. We never found it. <laughs> we never found no. it. Occasionally, my cat will turn and look at the wall. Like, I heard something. Okay, <laughs> it just walk off. At, like, at, at a certain point, you're just going to have to have it start paying rent. It's just like, all right, yeah, all right. you're going to. You know, can't can't be living here rent free. It's in a cupboard where yeah. we've got some food as well, like little treats, sugary treats. Like I'm surprised yeah. it hasn't come out just bouncing off the walls. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, that's bonkers. I don't know if you're aware of the competition that's going on in Europe at the minute with the soccer. No, I don't follow sports oh, okay. at all. I mean, just. <laughs> I, I I don't particularly, especially like especially soccer or football as we well, let's call it by its true name, it's, uh, football. Um, football. 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 Yeah, it's so it's the European Championship. So, um, and you know the UK or England, sorry, are renowned for having uh, not very good teams. Like the last time we won <laughs> any competition was the World Cup in 1966. 
Oh, wow. It wins football. So we haven't, you know, and we've not done very well, but it's hard not to get gripped by the competition because we've got a really good team at the minute. Well, that sounds um, like a Disney movie in the making. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the Mighty <laughs> Ducks, but... Because <laughs> they're all young as well. They're like practically kids, the team, so you could. Yeah. But yeah, like uh, last night we had my mum and her partner around and my mother-in-law and just watching. Uh, I, I Did I mention my recent purchase? I don't think I did. So I when we went to Cornwall on the drive home, it was... Uh, maybe a week or two out from the competition starting. And Liz just happened to mention, she went, oh, it'd be really cool to have like a projector to watch the football. And I was like, there it is. There's my in. There's my in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's my in. I've always wanted one. So I purchased one and I've got like the screen up. I made it, I made DIY to the sort of like roller screen. I mm -hmm. use like a roller blind kit and a bit of pipe and just put the screen yeah. on it. So... Yeah, it's only one of those cheap sort of like £130 it was off of Amazon, but it's fantastic, perfect for what we need it for. And we've just got it set up now, so we've been watching the, these matches on the big screen, which is ridiculous. There's no need for it in our house. It's not that big, but it's just great. It's great fun. It, 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 it is pretty cool to have something like that. I remember when uh, The Force Awakens came out mm -hmm. on Blu-ray, and uh, my mom's a big Star Wars fan, and she... She's, I mean, she's the one who got me into it. And so mm -hmm. the fact that here is this, you know, big thing that connects us. And I'm just like, you know, she didn't get a chance to watch it in the theater. And so she was in town. She picked it up and she stays with my stepsister and her family. And they have a movie room that oh, has nice. a projector with a screen. And so, you know, it was almost like it was a, it was a personal theater experience. And it was really yeah, cool. Yeah. Like I, I watched the last two of the um sequel trilogy with her which was a great experience altogether but you mm -hmm. know being able to have that semblance of that experience watching star wars with her and and you know having her you know basically be a kid again and watching star wars on this you know bigger screen it was it yeah. was an experience so i definitely understand where you know especially in uh, the age right now where it's like theaters are just opening back up Course, and you yeah. miss that experience of having it projected onto a screen and being able to experience. I mean, because I, I, me personally, where my entertainment, I, I experience my music. I listen to it incredibly loud uh, uh, to the point where to my hearing is incredibly yeah, yeah. impaired. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then where you know you want to be enveloped in what you're watching, um, especially if you want to get into the story and it's something that you, or, or, or whatever you're watching, if it's something that you really want to get into, you want to feel like you're there. So yeah, I, th yeah, I think I it, is. It. It's a, it is. Like, especially with the sound, like like you say with the theaters, and so with the projector, I my my thing always with projectors is like, how am I going to be able to get the sound to be where I need it to be, and it's not some tinny projector right. sound behind me. So like, I brought a little Bluetooth transmitter that I plug into the projector, and we've got a sound bar that has Bluetooth, so. You know, so yeah. we get that sound. So yeah, watching the the football with all that sound, it, it, it's been great. Um, we so I have been watching the Mandalorian on the projector as well. Just hell yeah, because yeah. Now, I did, I think I spoke about the first episode of Mandalorian or the first couple of episodes. The first episode yeah. I spoke about a while ago actually because I watched it like last year or the year before, or possibly last year, mm -hmm. and it was it was fine but it didn't grip me. And then I watched the mm -hmm. second episode and I was like, found it completely pointless mm -hmm. because it's, and I think I spoke about it on the last episode actually is where yeah. Mando goes to that planet, the Jawas sort of tear his ship apart and then he goes and gets some egg and then comes back and then gets his mm -hmm. ship rebuilt. And it was, I didn't understand the need for that episode. And there's been a couple of those episodes in all honesty where I've been like, I, I don't get it. I well, I think understand. I think where where the Mandalorian is concerned, it's very. I mean, the whole thing about Star Wars is that it's always been like a space western. Yeah. You have those, the, and and I think I never watched shows like Gunsmoke or Bonanza or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But it's it's and and the show is called The Mandalorian, and so you're following him. And he, I, I personally, where stories are concerned, I've I've always thought it seems very convenient that the stories that were told are the ones where things happen. 
And so, you know, so let's let's see a day in the life of this character. Now, it does become kind of almost video gamey where it's like, oh, this thing happens and you have to get from point A to point B. But again, to a certain extent, you have to have a story be interesting. And also, but also you want to relate to the character where it's like uh, any certain day, you know, it, it, it's not a, a, an exciting thing, but you have to get your oil changed or yeah, yeah, yeah. you're you're driving down the road and then you get a flat tire and it's like oh is this the day that i meet the love of my life no this is the day that i meet the triple a man and he's yeah. got a big beard and and you know that's really all there is to it and oh and then i was late for work and that's the big story but i think also with those stories is it establishes kind of to use the term loosely like the human aspect of it where it's like oh you know here's this badass character i mean in the first episode the first thing you see is him take down his bounty and Mm -hmm. you know and split the guy in half with the door and it's just like oh this guy's badass and then it's just like oh but in the second episode he's bested by jawas and it's like okay well he's fallible as well an element of vulnerability yeah 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 and so so and that helps you relate more because that's that's a big thing in storytelling where you, you you have to have that character who helps you integrate into the story and so if if the only character that you're following is this mandalorian he's the only static character well okay well i you know it's pedro pascal good looking man which you know you know just from seeing pictures of him because that helmet doesn't come off but yeah. he, you know he and then here he is, he's this badass in this awesome armor, and he's a devout, you know, to he's, he's devout to his upbringing and his belief system based off of, you know, the people that saved him. And, oh, here's this, and, and you're, you're added more into it, especially, you know, at the end of that first episode where here's this, this, this charge that he's, you yeah, know, yeah. He, he, he's sent to, to find, and it turns out to be this, this, you know, unknown species of creature which looks like a favorite character from the original trilogy yeah okay what's going to happen with that oh he's not just a badass he he has his weaknesses he has you know he's almost human and so that's your gateway into the star wars universe yeah that respect it's it's, it's just that that kind of like that just that particular episode so i was watching it and like not to say i didn't enjoy it because it's Star Wars. Anything Star Wars, right? Exactly. And it, and I get it, 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 it's, it's the it's the Leonardo DiCaprio with this drink and pointing moment. So I know them. I know those guys. Right. Yeah. Like, exactly. It's the Jawas. I know them. Like yeah. it's the sand crawler. I know it. Yeah. Um. So it. I mean, it feels like that episode was just like a here's another favorite character from the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it does yeah. also allow you. It, like it's the first time that you see the child use the Force like so right exactly mm-hmm. you've got that element and there is that exciting part where the the mother creature is attacking him and things like that but it's like on the whole it was just kind of like I, that could have well, been part of another episode like that right, didn't and I need get it. to be and, a whole and, episode but and the fact know, that like, they're, it's getting they're... more interested i'm more engrossed in it the more i'm watching mm-hmm. it. i think i've got two episodes of the first season left i mean Ooh, good stuff my favorite like I think one of my favorite episodes so far is where they uh, go to break the guy out of jail. Like that's really, that's great. Uh, oh, and, yeah. I mean, that's great for the action and seeing Mandalorian be badass. but then you've also got the episode where they sort of hiding out on the planet and meets up with whatever. I can't remember her name, the other bounty hunter. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm um, blanking on her name, but yeah, played by that? Ming-Na Wen. No. Oh no, 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 no. The one. Oh, oh so, Gina no, that's character. Cool. Yeah, Gina Carano, that's it. I was thinking UFC fighter, what's her name? The one who's been sacked because she's a horrible person, right. um, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Uh, you know, I didn't get involved yeah. in all of that. But, I mean, yeah. I really like her character in this, and I, I did quite like that. Like, there's been some really, really good episodes. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it's just like that. There's still that part of me that's like, am I enjoying it? And it's like, yeah, kind of, right. kind of. It's one well, of those I mean, ones. It's- yeah, I'm not. I'm not sort of like. I need to watch the next episode. I need to watch the next episode. It's like, what shall I watch? Okay, pull the screen down. Stick Mandalorian on, like, mm-hmm. because it's great. Like the sounds and stuff with, you mm-hmm. know, the blasters it's, and. It, it's definitely one of those where it's like you, you, yeah. I mean, you watch it for the presentation. You watch it because of the the Star Wars connection. I mean, season two definitely gets further into it. But yeah. I see what you're saying. I mean, and you mentioned it in the previous uh, recording that. 
uh, it, it would be it would be fine to have those filler episodes if yeah. the seasons themselves were in the double digits as far as the number of episodes per season yeah, yeah. but you know mandalorian and i mean even with these you know marvel shows i mean they've they, you know these marvel shows they've decreased the number of episodes i mean we've got here we are we were, we're a month into loki and we've only got two weeks left of episodes and it's like and they've managed to utilize those you know those episodes but uh with the storytelling and everything it's like it, you know it, it stuff is yeah. happening but then when you get mandalorian and it's just like he's doing the thing where he goes into a random town and they're like help us oh armored person and he's like okay fine like you know you've got this overarching story but then it's like a again it's another video game level where it's like okay i go into this i i need a thing but in order to get the thing that i need i need to go into this town and help this population with a monster that's terrorizing them and i do the thing and then i uh, and then the town is saved and now i get the thing that i need but then they also get something from the thing that i just took down yeah and uh okay now we can move on to the next level achievement unlocked you know? yeah it, it's when you, i think you did hit the nail on the head when you said it's like a video game thing i'm, I'm thinking like witcher or, or or red dead redemption it's like Right. So it's like he's he's doing going along doing his thing. It's like, hey, help me! Like at the side, you're like, oh, side quest. Um, yeah. <laughs> <you> go off. <laughs> My brother went missing. Can you find him for like that, that sort of? Yeah, yeah. Or or even Fallout, isn't it? Like like these. Yeah. They've overrun my farm. Come and help us! Yeah. Like it's <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, yeah, it does. And and I know you said about westerns as well. You know, it's like an old western where, mm -hmm. but Firefly was like a space western. Yeah, and that was like every episode, like even the slow episodes. Like I can't remember what the name of it was. Now is it Breathe or I think it was called or Out of Out of Out, out, of, of, out of Breath uh, or It was uh, Out of Air. Out of Air, um, was... the one where the one where the the engine or something in the engine room yeah, yeah, yeah. breaks Man. down and Thank he God. sends off the rest of the crew into into separate pods to see if they it's can just... find. And then in the meantime, he sends out a distress signal, and it turns out the people that answer him are pirates. I mean, that's yeah, incredible episode where not yeah. like you know, it's parts of it are really slow and not a lot is happening, but it's and you know, in, in the same sense of like Mandalorian, like where his ship got torn down and he had to go and do a thing. This is one where their ship, like you're on their ship and it malfunctions and they need to fix the ship, but then there's something else alongside it that yeah. makes it a hell of a lot more exciting. Um, I think yeah, also with that particular episode, I think that story it also benefited from. You know, here here he is, Malcolm Reynolds. He's on his ship that he loves so much. He's by himself, yeah. And he's, you know, you're, 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 the life is flashing before his eyes. And I think it the episode benefited from the flashbacks yeah. of, you know, you're not. The thing about the story is that you're thrown into it. You're you're not going from a linear. Okay, this captain gets this ship. Everything is already established, and so this yeah, yeah. is the episode. This is the story that they use to, yeah, uh, to to tell the story of how every character ended up on the ship and so that adds yeah, that sure. element of you know and so you know whereas mandalorian it's a very linear thing and so i think that also yeah he's got i think the that's child, also where that hang up and he's trying to take the child somewhere and then yeah but i think yeah it's possibly putting it as the second episode was so not a mistake because like who am i to tell them what they're doing right um do you know what i mean but it, i think having it early on in the season probably did hinder it somewhat um but yeah it, i don't know i'm still enjoying it don't get me wrong but right. yeah i'm making sure i'm watching every episode on the big screen because i think that probably helps mm -hmm. um speaking i've watched one episode of loki on the big screen because it just happened to be set up um but yeah, that I don't need to watch that on the big screen because it's no. <laughs> just fantastic as it is. Um, it is incredible. We will do, I think we will do an episode with you, uh, like all three of us. I don't want to talk about it without Tom here because oh, yeah, absolutely. he's the deep in the Marvel. But right. there's been some really interesting things happen. Yeah, and I've been uh, I've been meaning to reach out to you guys, but again, my schedule has been so nice no, all over then disjointed where anytime i think about something i'm just like i'm already in bed and i just don't want to you know and, yeah. or something else is going on but and yeah that whole thing where we're not always able to watch it as soon as it comes out now so we got the group chat going on and it's just like hey yeah. have you watched it yeah 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 
So, so yeah, no, but it's... uh I, I'm absolutely enjoying it. And just the I mean, not to you know, really dive deep into it, but I've really enjoyed all of these Marvel series. And sure. I love the meme that's going around where it's like you get hired on as a secondary character only to become the primary character in a big uh installment Huge. and and actually getting more screen time than yeah the, because the main character series but the, the other thing as well is like um each of these series are like so a couple of things each of the marvel series they're different genres mm-hmm. i feel they're different genres like um you know one division was more of like a, a what would you say it was? It was like a psychological like a, mystery type. Yeah, it was a fantasy horror type. Yeah, that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was Buddy Cop, as you know, a Buddy Cop yeah. action sort of thing. Um, Loki is what is it, it, Loki? It delves it's, back. It delves yeah. back into the fantasy aspect of it, considering you're dealing with. I mean, but it, it's fantasy sci-fi. Yeah, um, yeah. I suppose it's more sci-fi. You know, yeah. It, to but, an extent, when you're dealing with you know time travel and you're dealing with you know yeah the, all yeah, that and the TVA and but it's and the, alternate the, realities and timelines and yeah. yeah yeah I mean no that's a bit too much for spoiler if I call it yeah. what I was just about to call it I won't do that um, but the thing I I really like about it is each of these series is going to have a huge effect on the films going forward mm-hmm. like they deal with like a major sort of event that is going to yeah. really impact uh, the ongoing which, film series. And it's, it's incredible. An interesting, it's an interesting thing because it's like, like going back to when we talked about um, WandaVision mm-hmm. and the creators you know, and the writers and producers of that series, they were like, you don't have to have watched this, this series in order to understand what's going on in the bigger MCU film universe. Yeah. And, you know, but I'm watching like Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I'm like, well, you know, we've got a new Captain America. How are they going to, I mean, to an extent, you can just kind of explain, you know, the end of end game. And now Sam has this, this new suit. And he's like, oh, well, you know, you know, Cap gave him the, you know, Cap. And you could do it in a really quick bit of exposition. But I, 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 I don't know. I mean, they'll do what they're going to do. But, but I think the thing is, you look at Loki and all of the. Yeah. You look at Loki and all of the things that are happening in that series, and it's like, okay, yes, we've got, you know, we've got Spider Man coming up, and we've got, you know, the new Doctor Strange, and obviously, this series of Loki is going to somehow connect with those, especially when you think of like a multiverse aspect. It's going to have a massive, like, but, it, yeah. But how because, do you how do you it, go about that series? It's the thing that's going around, and I don't know, I, I don't think it's a spoiler, but it's like. At the moment in the MCU, there isn't a multiverse as such. Mm-hmm. The, not until you hit a certain point, because you've seen, you have seen the branches and stuff in um, mm-hmm. Infinity War. You saw the branches, didn't you? Right. Which everyone was like, oh, multiverse, but actually not. From look, watching Loki, it's like that's not actually a multiverse because they need to reach a certain point on that branch for it mm-hmm. to become sort of like the multiverse. From what mm-hmm. I'm like, a lot of people are talking about. So that that's it. that is an interesting point. We'll go more into that when we do the spoiler cast, thing, right? But, <laughs> but it, it's yeah, I can't remember what my <laughs> my point was going to be. But yeah, it's great. There you go. I that's, guess. I mean, enough. I guess my thing is, it's like you know. Um, Oh, I mean, this, this, this com- I, I found my point. We were saying about the, the shield with Sam and Captain America was, yeah, I think, like you say, I think it will be people that watch the films but not the series, they're going to they're gonna see Sam get the shield at the end and then he's going to be Captain America and they go, okay, cool, he's Captain America now. They don't necessarily need to know the journey to get to that point, whereas we have that journey because we've watched it. Right. We know that what it took for him to get that. We know that, uh, you know, there were black super soldiers that were just ignored for the whole mm-hmm. point. Um, so there, there, well, there was a potential you could have had a black Captain America all those years ago, but due to this sort of inherent racism and stuff in the world, you, mm-hmm. you couldn't have a black Captain America. Right. So, But now you have. Uh, we've got all of that background knowledge, so we know, like the ex- the, the bit that's there. But like, 
yeah, with everyone else, it'd be like, hey, he got the shield, so now he's cap. Cool. Got it. Right. And I, and I guess it comes from me being someone who I love stories and I love, you know, the, I mean, I've, I've got a whole damn bookshelf of Doctor Who yeah. non-canon books just to kind of add to that headcanon. And in fact, to go off on a quick tangent, like I was having a conversation with some random people the other night. I joined this random Discord server for the Byte app and hmm. uh, that even before 24 hours have left, I'm like, I, I can't do this and left. But uh, yeah. I ended up conversing with several people it was late at night i at, i got added to the server and uh my my default profile picture if it's not me uh it's the tardis and so yeah. i had people basically going oh you know who's your favorite doctor and i'm like my smart ass answer is the doctor because it's the same character it's just different incarnations but yeah, then yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll i'll amend by saying i love pretty much every incarnation jody's you know doing a bang up job right now i yeah. hate these rumors of her leaving let's just let's just yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh but um was having a conversation i said because uh, i did say the only bit of doctor who property that uh i think is abysmal is uh the peter cushing remix mm. uh because it totally takes the whole alien aspect out of it and uh you know where it's an old man whose name is doctor who and uh and he creates a machine and he's like i call it tardis and it's like oh my god but uh but in having a conversation a side conversation with another whovian he's like i've never heard of this and i'm like oh yeah in the 70s they tried to recreate the first couple stories of um the the hartnell uh era and it's just it's just not good and uh and, it, and it's you know it did not but then i said or you you know or you can see it as an alternate timeline or you can see it as uh you know this peter cushing character is another jackson lake from the next the next doctor david Tennant story where yeah. we're like oh yeah and and i was just like okay well i just had canoned the I, I now the doctor who and the daleks that's uh that is fine now like it is yeah. now part of the canon because you know they don't explain that story but uh but yeah i'm 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 someone who loves finding out more about uh the background of a story so other people they may be fine they may be fine not watching yeah, yeah, yeah. wandavision or falcon and winter soldier and or or loki and just having the movies and just be like you know this is another superhero film i don't need to know too much except for hulk smash and you know yeah. avengers assemble or you know another and then throw the you know coffee cup to the ground but yeah, uh, yeah. yes i like me that i'm like actually that was great oh that was great um <laughs> but i you know i i'm someone who's just like well how did you know it, how did he get the how did sam get the, the outfit how did you know and you know was there a journey and and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the fact that there is the story there i mean again i i live for that story but you know i know most people are just like eh, it is what it is yeah, yeah. but yeah I, there are people that are, are quite happy with that I, i'm one of these people who will be annoyed at a little thing like in there and I'm like, that's not right that can't be right how is that right but i won't do the research to find out why it's right and why it's okay right. <laughs> you know i'm one of those people who I do, I do like the details if they're given to me i don't like to search mm -hmm. for them you know I, I like doctor who but i probably won't go and read any of the back stuff i won't read any of the other star wars books i will just stick with what i've got there's so much star wars stuff to watch like bad batch mm -hmm. and uh, like there's loads on disney plus now I, I don't know what to do <laughs> which every time i see it advertised on disney i'm just like does that say bad bitch yeah like yeah, that's yeah. Oh, it's a disney <laughs> Wait, um hold well, on a second <laughs> disney plus we've got uh, in the uk i don't know if it's the same in the states but we've got like star as part of the disney plus service mm -hmm. there's a thing no we don't oh, okay so it's got lots of, sort of adult stuff on it as well like not 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 that adult but like grown-up <laughs> stuff sorry right <laughs> not made for kids so uh, like there's other stuff like um i'm trying to think what things are on there like it's got stuff like castle and um like on you're, Disney you're Plus. more you're more mature series uh, yes that... there we go we're getting more for our, our, our subscription essentially yeah um yeah i hate that i use a vpn and disney's like no you can't watch it in there yes i can <laughs> i have to turn it off which is weird because my vpn is set to the uk like it's just a different part of the uk it's set to and disney's like you can't watch that but it's the uk you can't pretty connect sure to the disney plus service it doesn't matter but yeah we've got other stuff on there which is it, it's really good actually um got national geographic stuff on there as well like all the documentaries it's 
Mm-hmm. There's just so much to watch on there. There's just yeah. so much, which is great. It's a good problem to have. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, but then you you run into that issue where it's like you, you know the old the the old fashioned tradition. Um, you know, back in the day before streaming, the whole, yeah. whole issue was you're just flipping through channels and you're like, "There's nothing to watch. I've got 400 channels." Yeah. And now it's now it's there's nothing to watch. I've subscribed to six or seven different streaming services that have hundreds and hundreds of different you know yeah, yeah. bits of yeah. media in them. Uh, we've got Disney Plus, we've got Prime, we've got Netflix, a YouTube Premium, which we don't even I only really use it at work just so I can listen to music. Um, right. But uh Netflix is actually uh, they've released this new feature. I found it the other day where it's like looking for something to watch they've got like a shuffle option on there now yeah and, so, and you click it and it pulls up a thing they're like if you don't want to watch this click next and you and it just randomly i, I like that idea that's yeah. a really good idea because I, so often we're just like scrolling down 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 <laughs> just constant looking something to catch my eye i don't know well there well there are things like you know I, i've gotten to that point where i've been doing a lot of rewatching. Mm-hmm. I've got a queue full of things that I need to watch, and um, like I'm I'm going through and rewatching Adventure Time just so that <laughs> you know I I just need something that is like 15 minutes, and it's funny because it's like I don't want to watch a two and a half hour movie, but I will watch 12 episodes of Adventure Time in a run, and it's just like okay, that's the same amount of time, but uh, you know it's it's, it's, it's not the it, same. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's not the same, um, and in fact. Uh, it's not until like a friend of mine comes over and uh, we'll finish watching a series. We just got done watching Shit's Creek, um, oh, yeah. which is amazing. I highly recommend. It's one mm-hmm. of those. It's so good. Um, and so, you know, it was very emotional and very sweet and all that. And so we're like, what do you want to watch now? And we just started watching Sweet Tooth on mm-hmm. Netflix, um, which was the, the one based on the DC property. It's a kind of a, I, I jokingly refer to it as whimsical post-apocalyptic. Oh, okay. um, it's the one that Robert Downey Jr. and his wife uh, executive produced, and oh, okay. which is funny that they, you know, Iron here's Man. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, <laughs> Iron Man doing a DC property. Um, but, uh, but no, it's apparently there's this virus, and it uh, it, it uh, anyone who who catches it dies shortly after. And uh, while this is going on, they're trying to find a cure and everything. While this is going on, uh, children born within that time are born with animal features. And okay. so they, they refer to them as hybrids. And so the big yeah. question is, like, did the virus breed these hybrids or did the hybrids breed the, the virus? And so there's this there's this prejudice. Um, basically, there are government factions that um, take the kids and either dispose of them or put them in you know different uh, like uh internment sort of camp sort of thing yeah, yeah, yeah and and the story follows this one kid whose name is gus who was born as like half human half deer and his father uh takes him into the woods and basically there's a the isolated part of the yellowstone national park and where they live for like 10 years before the story really takes off and uh it's 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 uh, it, it's an interesting mix of it's very sweet because you've got this kid who's just got these big antlers. He doesn't know anything about the world and he ends up embarking out on this adventure uh, to try to find safe haven. And uh, while at the same time you have these people who are trying to kill him because of what he is. And mm-hmm. it, I, we're only two episodes in and just the way that the storytelling, the way that it's produced, the music that's involved. I'm a sap. Like I, again, I get really into storytelling. I yeah, get yeah. very, I can get into something and I've had, I've had it where I've been watching something and I'll, I'll sniffle. And the person that I'm with is just like, what is wrong with you? I mean, the, the best story that I have is when Lilo and Stitch came out in the movie theater oh and gosh. I yeah. was still working at the movie theater at the time. And again, back to the whole point of you watch it on a big screen, you get enveloped in everything going on. And here you've got this adorable blue creature who doesn't have a place in the world finally almost does and then gets ousted the scene where he goes out with the, the ugly duckling book and turns to the page oh, where the, the it's I'm like lost. i'm lost yeah exactly i was sitting there with a friend of mine and i got i mean i started to tear up and i i sniffled and she turned to me like in the middle of theaters like what is wrong with you <laughs> and i'm like he's lost he's lost like he doesn't like, he doesn't gets, belong anywhere he has no place gets, in the world 
exactly yeah. that gets to me i mean i'm i am that audible uh reader where you know not audible.com you know no sponsorship or anything but yeah, yeah. you know i i will gasp i will laugh i will oh, i yeah. will react to what i'm reading i get sucked into a story and so i mean without fail the 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 way that the stories are set up the way that these episodes are set up to in the first two episodes are set up so well there's a there's a bit of a storytelling aspect to it over the beginnings and the ends of the episodes i mean that first episode the way that the music plays and the, the the way that it's shot and you're you're immediately gripped into what's happening with the story i'm i'm already like i'm cheering up and i'm just like oh my god what, what are we getting ourselves yeah, into yeah, yeah. first two episodes and within the first five minutes i'm just like okay here we go i mean just cheering up i mean yeah I, I i'm that person as well uh the story where we were most affected i mean it's you've got the the, the fact that i am a parent um mm -hmm. we're i'm an emotional person anyway like i get involved invested in stories like you do uh so does my wife chloe not so much but we went to watch brave at the, mm -hmm. at the cinema and it's being a parent has made us a lot more emotional when it's like the relationship with a child and a parent so mm -hmm. like in lilo and stitch the, the the relationship between lilo and her sister like that's the parent right. sort of like that part as well sort of gets us but it's in in brave when like sh the mum so sort of, it almost seems like the mum's gonna stay a bear and she's lost her mum and when mm. she's sort of there chloe just started wailing like i was getting misty <laughs> chloe started wailing <laughs> because it was like the, the girl's not gonna have her mum anymore because she started crying i actually started tears going liz was crying like all three of us sat in the cinema like <laughs> crying and you're, this film. you're crying they're like this movie <laughs> yeah it's just it's bonkers um yeah but liz would cry at the drop of a hat at anything with any sort of emotion uh i i do get misty eyed a lot um what we haven't embarked on yet we watched raya and the last dragon that was great yeah i need to that is really good um but the one that we're not sure about like if we want to take that plunge is luca yeah, I keep getting told about that. I went, uh -huh. I'm just like, I need to be in a certain headspace for it. Like that, like that. For sure. and, uh, like that Chloe, who Coco. doesn't I haven't cry. even watched Coco yet. So I'm like, oh, Coco's yeah, a hard I'm, one. I, it's brilliant. It's uh -huh. so good, though. Yeah. Chloe, like I say, is not an emotional person, but she watched Luca on her own. Uh, she, uh -huh. Well, I say on her own, she was on FaceTime with one of her friends, like talking to her right. friend. They were both watching it together. And Chloe showed me a video that she took of herself. Like there's, she made a TikTok of her <laughs> reacting to Luca, just tears streaming down her face. Like, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not sure if I want to watch yeah. this film. Yeah, like, if that's how you reacted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a hard one, that, I think. But. Yeah. And that's, that's, I know that's, nothing about it except like he's a sea creature. Yeah, like that's yeah. about it. That's I, what I, I've got. And that's that's and that's normally the best way to go into it. Where yeah, it's yeah. just like, oh, like you you mentioned Brave. I mean, I didn't realize when it when when Brave came out, I didn't see it in the theater. I, I got it on Blu-ray because I'm just that type of person. Yeah. I'm like, it's a Pixar film. I'm gonna it, like it. it. I'm gonna <laughs> like it exactly. So like, okay. <laughs> So I'm watching it and, you know, all you have to go on are the teaser trailers and it's like, okay, there's, you know, there are bears involved somehow. And, and there's she's big, Scottish. But, <laughs> but yeah. And so yeah. you can barely understand her. Just, you know, which I love that joke in Wreck-It Ralph too. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, we, we just sometimes go along with it. We don't understand what she's yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. but sometimes it's just best to go along with it. But uh but I didn't realize there was this whole overarching story of just the, the, the disagreement between, you know, the parent and the child. And then, uh Oh, because of that disagreement, like the parent gets turned into this bear and you could lose your parent, like, which, which is very, there's, there's a bigger, you know, impact yeah, yeah, yeah. to that where it's just like, you know, it's uh, a be careful what you gets... wish for story. That's oh, the trope, exactly. isn't it? It's yeah, that is the trope, but it's I just a classic one, but it's just how they Not use knowing it. It's that that was the direction of the story i was like i like it even more because i wasn't spoiled on i was like oh that's what this story is about cool like all that we got from the trailers was from like the first five minutes of the movie but they yeah, made you, it look like you, you, you know that, that it was the whole movie you, you got that other side sort of aspect of it where the dad sort of like has this 
vendetta against a specific bear that he's never been able to kill mm -hmm. so then when the mum's in the castle he thinks that's the, and you're like oh my god is uh, the dad gonna kill the mum like what, okay. what's going on this is some psychological stuff that i'm just not <laughs> yeah. ready to deal with at the moment yeah <laughs> look at the writing credits freud oh cool um <laughs> simon freud hmm. Hmm. it's a bit yeah yeah but i uh, We've gone on a massive Disney tangent. It's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's um, yeah, uh, I think I don't even know what time we started. We get we could talk for hours, couldn't we? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's about ten thirty on my time, so we're oh, good. Yeah. It's still morning. <laughs> still morning over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't really know what else has been going. I mean. There's a thing that me and Tom talk about quite like with band practices and stuff like that, which is still going ahead, mm -hmm. which has been really fun. We've got one next week, I think. It's good. It's going oh, really nice. well. We're really enjoying it. I'm I've got too much going on at the minute, actually, because I'm yeah. I'm I'm trying to keep fit. So I'm going to the gym like two or three times a week. I'm also going mm -hmm. climbing once a week. I'm also doing a university course that I need to finish my essay. <laughs> it's like <laughs> also got the podcast, also got the band, also got a wife and a daughter. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just so much that and that's what explains where my head is because I've got a, an assignment due on Thursday. Yeah, deadlines on mm -hmm. Thursday. So I do have that to work on, which I will be doing at some point today. Oh, and also the European Championships also take up some of my evenings now, like football, oh, yeah. because yeah. I've yeah. got into that for some reason. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say that because, uh, I mean, I've I've had kind of our slowdown in the recent couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, I mean, I've got the, uh, you know, I, I had the, the transition of position at work uh, where my days are now kind of sporadic, but that's been helping like me wake up a lot earlier and mm -hmm. then utilize the day a lot more. Um, I'm working out myself a lot more. I need yeah. to actually go to the gym, but I've got a pull-up bar um, in yeah. my in my room. So you know, if nothing else, I'm, I've got, I've got one you know, there. I've <laughs> got I'm, got I'm about arms. to get my tickets to the gun show. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but you know, and and I've been trying to you know watch my you know watch what I eat. Um, the whole pandemic thing. Because um, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine where it's like I haven't had fast food in several months. Yeah, and yeah. and and like the closest thing to fast food as far as it being prepared fast um are like the sandwich shops that we have here and i'm like okay I'm, i don't consider that fast food i, I consider i haven't been to mcdonald's in, in a minute you know and, yeah, yeah. and even at, the, at this point i'm just you know just the idea of a of a big mac i'm like Bleh. Um, cause I've been, I've been doing a lot more cooking for myself. Yeah, um, yeah, I've, I've seen which, that you share a lot of recipes and stuff or uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of things that you've been cooking. looks good. It's great. It, it, it's good I to mean, get that satisfaction when you've cooked something, you know, exactly what's in it. You know, it's mm -hmm. good for you. Yeah. Well, it's also, it's also, I, I'm, I'm a nerd in the respect of not just with, you know, the media that I, you know, just engorge myself on, but also I, I, I have a fascination with how things work. Mm -hmm. and how things are put together and whether it, you know i'm i'm i grew up with computers my dad is a computer engineer and in fact he you know taught computer engineering in um in in college courses uh, before he retired but you know i grew up with computers so i have this fascination with I, I i can't tell you like what all the pieces are but if i look at something and i'm just like okay this affects this this affects that blah blah yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. To the point where I'm, I'm pretty much the glorified IT guy at work. Where they're like, Andrew, this thing isn't working. Well, when you say it's not working, what is, you know, what is it doing? Well, mm -hmm. it's doing this. Okay, then I can, you know, uh, isolate it from this to this. And of course, you know, the tried and true. Did you turn it off? Turn it on again. Um, but it's what uh, I refer to as a power cycle. I'll tell yeah. you. If, if you don't, just, let me just do a power cycle reset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly, and and normally that works. Other times, it's it's having to switch things out. But apparently, yeah, like yeah. I'm, you know, I'm the guy who knows. I'm just, you know, I'm just switching things out, you know. But yeah, okay, I, I can be the the smart IT guy. Yeah, but I. I, I was going to say I've I've always had that like I've got that thing I like to know I take things apart and then put it back together. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I became that IT person. It's like, oh, Hank, can you come up and look at my computer? Like, so I thought right. I do it as a profession now because, yeah, you know, I get paid that's, to do it now. It's fine. That's part of my that's part of my resume. Yeah. Um, but where, but moving into the culinary side of it, it's it's interesting 
you know, you look at something like, for instance, I went up to Virginia to, to visit my, my mom and one weekend, you know, I've uh, something fancy because of, I guess the, you know, it, Oh, it's, it sounds like it's in French chicken cordon bleu. Yeah. And it, I, I love chicken cordon bleu. And it's one of those things where it's like, you get the final product. And most of the time me, it, it's kind of a weird juxtaposition, but me, I don't like too much analysis on something that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, so food being one of them, because it's like you may like something, but then you turn it out, but then you find out it's 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 lamb intestines, and it's just you know it's just like oh this tastes good. Yeah, what yeah. is it? Oh, it's donkey balls, and it's just you yeah, know yeah. That, that sort of thing. But it ruins it. <laughs> yeah, but you know finding out chicken cordon bleu is just really three main ingredients, you know, and you know you rolled up and you you put it you know breadcrumbs on. I'm just like oh my god, you know this, this my brain just exploded. Now I understand like what it takes to make it and i can make it yeah. and that that's a big you know that's a big self-satisfactory kind of you know oh i'm i'm adulting because i know how things are you know th things are made i used to play with lego bricks yeah, and yeah. building things now i'm playing with food and building things and, mm -hmm. and figuring out the best tastes and it's been a lot of fun and it's a very it's you know to an extent it's a creative process where you have all these you know materials and you put them together for a final product that can then you can then further enjoy. And I've been doing that a lot lately. I mean, I, I, I'm definitely that, uh, you know, to quote Bo, Bo Burnham, I, I have semblances of a, a white woman Instagram where it's just like, here's my, here's my dinner for the evening or, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, I made this, you know, hashtag love life and, you know, that sort of thing. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, it is, it's, it's when you're proud of something you've created, like, why not share it? Going back to that going back to sorry it's, it just happened for the people listening i, I took a quick break <laughs> i've edited this together so what you're saying about um taking photos of things that you're proud of that you've done and that sort of reminds me yesterday we went to see a couple of friends and i i go climbing with the husband and my mm. wife goes for walks with the wife like it's uh but yeah i go climbing and they were sort of like taking the mick out of us because we were talking about climbing and they're like well, yeah we don't care we're not interested what you're talking about and right. but yeah, they they made some sort of joke about oh yeah, just showing off with your videos on Instagram and for, and it's a, but it's not showing off as such. Like I get how it can come across like that because you, you look at this thing I did, I'm strong, but it, it's right. not. It's just like I've been battling with this problem for like weeks, and I finally mm -hmm. got it done. Um, yeah, it, it, so yeah, I I mean I've I've. In the early days of my Instagramming, I was like, I never wanted to be that putting pictures of food up. But one of my first photos is a meal that I made. <laughs> like, yeah. So yes, I became well, one of those. Yeah. It's uh, you know, to an extent, it's something that you know you enjoy. It's that you know that classic Adam Ellis cartoon with the two the two panels, and someone just like oh, blah blah blah, and then the second person like pinches their lips, and it's like let people enjoy things. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, you know, there, there's a reason why this person posted this thing. Um, you know, I'll, I, my Instagram is just so random and it's just like these are things that i thought you know were funny and these are things that i thought this and that i mean just the other day i've been reading uh the portable door by tom holt and he makes a doctor who reference and so you know i've took yeah a, i saw you, you shared know, that quote yeah i took a picture of it and it's just like and then you know of course you know i uh you know i did the whole i understood that reference you know captain america meme and it's like this was funny to me but yeah, uh but the thing is as well it's that hope you, you posted that and it made me go oh i wonder what that book is so like i will look it up yeah. and based on a little quote that you saw in it that you oh, i know this shared it like i get this reference do you get this reference and i'm like oh i wonder what that book is so it's like but it, it is that sort of thing as well if you share recipes and things like that people you're hoping that people will i suppose it's that looking for people to interact on it like a, a same level yeah. like hopefully someone else finds this interesting and you can talk to them about it like I share videos of me climbing. I include hashtags about climbing and then other people mm -hmm. who climb get that in their feed and then they like it and they might follow you and you might talk to them. And it's, it's, well, it's that funny that you mentioned that because thing, isn't it? anytime I see you post a video of you climbing, I'm like, Oh damn, you know, yeah. let me, let me, let me do a, a few reps on the pull up okay. and you know, it's yeah. just like, okay, it, it's inspiring. Cause you know, back to, you know, it, it, just trying to eat healthier and, and be mm -hmm. more active. I mean, I've, I've been yeah, every day. I'll, I'll, I take a couple multivitamins. I've added protein shakes to my diet. I've added protein bars, you know, when yeah. I, when I don't have an opportunity to really eat breakfast and, you know, I, I just got to rush to work. I'll, you know, I'll 
put a couple protein bars in my bag and that'll be yeah. kind of my snack. And it's definitely helped out. I've seen um, some very significant, you know, changes and whatnot. So, you know, there's that aspect of it. Um, you know, you're talking about, you know, being busy, there's work, there's, you know, trying to remain active. I've gotten back into visual art, mm -hmm. um, which is something yeah, that I used to do. Yeah, it's uh, it was something I used to do when I was a lot younger. Um, I mean, in fact, I there was the whole joke where my name is Andrew, and the the you know you you shorten it to Drew, and that's the past tense of draw, and so of course it's kismet that I you know oh Drew drew this, and so yeah. you know I used to do it a lot, but then people were like, oh you're so good at it, uh, you should you know market it, and I'm just like no, it's just something that I really enjoy doing, and then yeah. finally. I balked and my senior year of high school, I took an art class and, you know, I learned a lot about different aspects and properties of different presentations, different media and different mediums. Um, and, and it ended up where I did this, this project. And basically the whole idea was how do you best present this particular like pointillism or cross hatching in, in, in uh, representing shadows and this and that and, and to give aspects and contrast uh, to your piece. And there was one piece that I did that I, it was supposed to, um, it was supposed to encapsulate all the different, like at least five different points of, uh, of, of shadow presentation. And that's what I did. And it was one of those pieces that I was very fond of because of what it meant to me, which is to me, the point of art yeah. and uh, the, the teacher didn't give me a failing grade, but gave me a near failing grade because they their their reasoning was it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, but the assignment wasn't for it to make sense. The assignment was for it to include these different points of yeah. lines and this and that. And that's what I presented. And so it, it that aspect of it, it really uh, disheartened me to the mm -hmm. point where I was just like, I stopped. I stopped drawing. I stopped really doing much. I used to have sketchbooks out the yin yang of, the, of different, you know, uh, line, you know, random doodles and things that I I looked at and could draw just from looking at it. Yeah, just different, studies you know, sort of and thing. different techniques, isn't it? That, yeah, that, that's and what so, artist books are. Sketchbooks are exactly. full of. Like, yeah. yeah, and so I, and at that around that time, I had, I had started getting more into writing, and so I leaned more on writing. Uh, and stop drawing as much and then um and then people you know and then were it was a vicious cycle where people would read my writing and be like oh you should publish this or you should and i'm just like right now i'm just doing this for fun i mm -hmm. i my brain is one of those that goes a mile a minute and i have an idea in fact last night before i went to bed i you know i happened to see a, a trailer for that chris pratt movie the tomorrow war I know nothing about it, but just from the, the 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 title itself, my brain goes, "Oh, what if there was a story about this?" And I'm just like, "Okay, well, sleep on it. And if you wake up and you still have this idea, maybe write some notes down." And so mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I'm sure the story's already been told, but not by me. So no, that's it. It doesn't you know, matter, does it? Every story's already been told. It's just a different right interpretation, it's a different, it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so. You know, and so I'm just like, it's just a hobby. And then um, in I was talking to this girl and she's a very brilliant artist. And I wanted, you know, I was, I was trying to be, hey, get back into it. You're brilliant at it. And it's nothing just for a hobby. And then I, uh, I got back into drawing and because of her and, and then, you know, with technology being what it is, I was just like, ooh, you know, I, I'm curious about this digital art thing. Um, and you know, she got me curious about it, but then, uh, I, you know, got the, you know, all the, the stuff for it. And so I've just been like, it, it's branched off. And anytime I have a, an idea, uh, I'm like, okay, I've got a whole list of, you know, I've got in my notes app, I don't have mm -hmm. any, you know, apologies instead. I have a, you know, <laughs> I have a, I'm not an Instagram or YouTube celebrity, so I don't need that. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. instead I've so got, you saying you notes, use the so. notes app to take notes. Yeah not, yeah, not to give you more characters on Instagram or Twitter to write an apology. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 use it yeah. To take notes. Uh, what a weird concept. Go figure. <laughs> I know. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a list of different things, and a lot of them are just really stupid puns. Um, you know, I've got the, you know, and that's an, that's another form of you know bringing out my humor. Um, I mean, it, I've got it's got its own Instagram page, which I can link yeah. you to. 
uh, if you don't follow it already. But, uh, you know, I've got there. there I, I guess I'm starting a series of fantasy characters that mm -hmm. are based on puns. And so you've got the Monitor, who is a minotaur with a monitor head where the yeah. bull face is in the in the actual monitor screen. Um, and then you've got the Rapscallion, who is basically a giant onion. Um, who yeah. is a who is a rogue type character, um, which is what a rapscallion means. And yeah, so, yeah. you know, and then uh, before I yeah, started, doing I was going to say stuff, that one wouldn't. I don't, I don't know if that would translate over here because we don't call them. They're not scallions. We've got. Is it spring onions? Are they the same thing? <laughs> Probably. They're, yeah. they're they're the smaller onions with the the, longer... the long stem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We call, yeah. We call them spring onions, but I, I know, like, I know what a scallion is, so it, it, yeah, it works for me. So, <laughs> but I mean, and 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 so uh, before I started doing the digital stuff, um, I was doing a lot more, you know, um, pen and ink, and mm -hmm. I did a really small drawing of uh, a brush with death, and basically, it's just a big hairbrush standing next to a grim reaper yeah. and so Literally what i've been trying to do with death. <laughs> yeah and in fact um once i started doing the digital art stuff and understanding all the different aspects of shading and layers and things like that I was, i've been trying to reinterpret uh a lot of the pen and ink drawings into a digital format mm. and uh, and one of my favorites is the interpretation of a brush with death um I, and i mean if you go onto the page, it, you'll see what I'm talking about. And, yeah, yeah. uh, and it, it's just, it's been fun to be able to be creative because I guess I'm going, I go through phases where I guess I'm going back into a writing phase now, um, yeah. where I've got all these different stories that I want to write, but I'll go from writing to Let's put the two together. Uh, the, illustrate yeah, your I mean, stories. That, well, <laughs> that's actually what I, I'm, I'm working on something. Uh, one of the earlier projects that I did, uh, once I started getting into the digital art is, Your audio's dropped out. Series that I've been writing, and uh, your audio I dropped out for me there. <laughs> so into it that. What happened? The audio dropped out. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. I'm... Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. I think we've caught up again. Yes, yeah, I can you were hear saying you now. one of your yeah. earliest projects when you. One of my earliest projects was. <laughs> okay, so one of my earliest projects um, of the digital art you know, learning digital art and, and getting all that um, is uh, it incorporates with a project that I, a writing project that I've been working on for like the last 15 or 20 years. And uh, basically it's a fantasy humor series and takes all of the stupid puns and makes characters out of them. Um, and so uh, one of the, I got so far into it that I like even had a wall that I used, I put, I posted, oh, wow. I had poster boards just uh, pinned to my wall where any kind of notes and, and you know, and um, it's kind of the, the Pepe Silvia thing from that you see from it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I didn't have any pins with strings or anything, but it was a, a, kind of like a, 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 an idea board. And uh, I started even coming up with uh, family crests and things like that. And so if you oh, look wow. on my page, there is a 12 pointed star with an E in the middle of it. And that is the insignia of the main character, yeah. which I drew a long, long time ago. And I got so into it. I was like, this is going to be a thing that I went on to at the time. There's a website called Cafe Press where you can yeah. just put your art onto a T-shirt and everything. And so I have a baseball tee of this very simple design on the chat and on the back of it. It's almost like a you know a baseball jersey where it's got the character's name. I think and I've, then I've seen I that. That, that yeah. star i've seen that was that one of your usernames in some places at one point yes yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah. fact yeah, my email address is the, yeah, that's yeah. The, the the character's first name and yeah, yeah. um and so uh so i was like you know what i why don't i spruce it up and so i did that and now i've got another baseball tee with the updated version oh, okay. of it and so um so yeah so i'm you know looking to write stories and and illustrate them and basically be like a one man, you know, show as far as, you know, I wrote this and illustrated it. Um, yeah, yeah. kind of like a Walter, Walter Moore's, uh, sort of thing with, uh, you know, uh, a book plug, uh, Captain Bluebeard and the, and his 13 and a half lives. Um, and he, uh, that's, that's a great story where basically it's a big book and bright yellow cover with a blue bear on it. And, uh, and 
like every other page or so has an interesting illustration that goes with the story. Yeah. But uh, or Jeff Kinney and the Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Um, yeah, <laughs> very good series. But uh, but yeah, so been trying to you know work through that but it's been it, it, it's i've been kind of on a uh i haven't done much these past two weeks because my ac has been out Ooh. and uh yeah so like at the beginning of our conversation like i wanted to make sure that there wasn't any ambient noise which there has been uh either yeah. from the window unit that the complex has put into my bedroom or the tower fan that i have so right now <laughs> i've got no airflow which yeah. is fine but uh <laughs> But yeah, um, it's been two weeks running, and I'm like, I just, I just want an AC. Fortunately, it's not as bad as what's going on, like you know, up north or out west, where you know you either got, you know, it's so dry and hot that you've got wildfires, or it's so hot that you know the government's telling you not to run your AC, and it's like, okay. But even so, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, that's. But, uh, um... I was listening to a podcast today while I was at the gym, actually, and they were talking about uh, they're based in Texas. And, and I think they were saying that Texas was saying not to run your air conditioning or your thermos, like turn your thermostats down or something like that. And there was a program that or a subscription service that you could you could buy into this experimental thing. I think it was either with Ring or, or Nest that you could yeah. buy into it where the they set it's a smart like smart thermostat thing like it, it it will set the temperature for you sort of thing like you don't even have to touch it it will, it will know it. but when texas said like the government like the yeah the, it, it, the whoever's in charge of texas i don't know what's called them, governors whatever it, yeah when they, they came out and said <laughs> oh yeah you know try not to use your air con so much these, these people that enrolled into this smart heating program or the smart air con program their thermostats were set to like 80 degrees, I think, or something like that. I I don't know what that means. So basically it was set to that. And the the people who are in the house can't change it because it's set by somebody else. They're not able to change it. And if they want to leave that program to allow them to change it, it could take up to two months. So they were sort of set with <laughs> their thermostat set and they couldn't do anything yeah. about it because they were trying to save like money or whatever. Like it's mm -hmm. just bonkers. Yeah, That's it's such it's, a scary thing. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Texas, they've they've gotten the brunt of it. I mean, they mm -hmm. were the ones that uh, you know, they had the you know um, snow very storm. Yeah, so, huge snowstorm, yeah. you know, that, that that knocked out power. And I mean, I've got friends who live in, in Texas and they were talking about how at a certain point they didn't have any water, they didn't mm -hmm. and you know, they didn't have any power. I mean, they were getting to the point where it's like, let's flee Texas kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like we don't have we don't have any resources available and it's just it's it's scary um but yeah um i mean like you know I, it, from a you know perspective standpoint i'm like okay yeah i'm a i'm a bit uncomfortable but well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it's like i always say to people where like just because you've got two broken legs doesn't mean they're one broken legs insignificant like right you know what i mean it, you know yeah yes. It sucks, like Texas, really bad. Yeah, comparatively, yes, you are uncomfortable, but it still sucks for you. Like you're yeah, still yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know. I try, to, I try to look at it that way too. Um, but you know, it's also you, you have to have. The, I try to have that balance. So you yeah, know, yeah. I have, I have it bad, but others have it worse. But I still yeah. have it bad. Yeah, you know? I still have so it bad. There, yeah. there, there's an inconvenience to it. You know, but, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, I really want to. You know, I've, I've fortunately, thanks to you know, the aforementioned notes app, when I do have an idea, um, you know, I'll write it down and be like, okay, once things, you know, start to, you know, pick back up or things get cooler and, you know, I feel very, you know, I feel more motivated and inspired to go ahead and do this, then, you know, I'll have that to fall back on. Um, so that way the people who follow me on Instagram, on my art, you know, my art Instagram, yeah. we'll have something to look at and be and 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 shower me with like oh this is really cool or you know yeah, give yeah. me my likes give me that little bit of endorphins to yeah, yeah. give you me know, the validation <laughs> I give me that see. validation yeah. yay i'm back into drawing because it, yeah, it yeah. becomes the thing where it's like you know i'm very I, i'm very happy and very proud of what i've been able to uh produce and create um it's just it's nice that other people appreciate it as well and that uh, is good like I, I, like i say i've I seen a few of your posts and i do like i, I remember seeing so I suppose it must have been when you first got your digital uh, set. Was it, I imagine it's like an iPad and an Apple Pencil. It is, yeah. yeah. It's an iPad with a pencil, yeah. yeah. Um, 
it was either that or it was a Samsung version. But you know, but I remember seeing you were following tutorials at the time, so getting used to how, mm-hmm. like, learning how to use the tools and how it works. I remember seeing all of that. It's, it's really cool. Chloe has got uh, she got an Apple pencil. Uh, she had an iPad. The Apple pencil didn't work with the iPad, so we had to get <laughs> another iPad. <laughs> <laughs> um, from, <laughs> but which is fine because her old ipad she cracked anyway but so yeah so getting her a new one but luckily the new one came it came from my mum. it was hers that she doesn't use so yeah there you saved go that a bit works. of money there but yeah so she she's got really into her drawing recently and she's making like huge progress uh, and it's good to see because when i i was younger sort of like eight nine i was really into drawing especially like cartoon sort of characters and things mm-hmm. like that and i was really good for my age and then I stopped yeah. and I was still at that stage. So now I'm really bad for my age. <laughs> you know, I was ahead of the curve <laughs> and then I stopped and now I'm back. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just one of those things. It happened. Yeah. I remember I, like, I was drawing like, like uh, Pokemon, the, the original 151, like mm-hmm. the early ones, uh, Disney characters, anything like that. So, Oh yeah. I, I, I do. I would like to carry, like learn to, I'd love to pick it up again, but I've got so much other stuff that I'm just not. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got a Scrivener on my laptop. Yeah, I imagine you'll know what that is. I'm not. Yeah. Not. I learned to navigate. I've not touched it since. You know. Mm-hmm. But it seems like a really good pr- program. <laughs> yeah. For writing. Yeah, I've got the. Uh, yeah, I've got a. Um, there is a writing program. Uh, it's a uh, story now or. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what it's specifically called, but um, I'm currently working on a series to uh, get back into the world of 173. Yeah. And uh, I've got this whole idea of um, I've, I'm, I've, I've set myself on it and I'm still working on it, basically trying to write 173 stories based around this wow. one number. And uh, I've gotten, I've gotten some good, uh, some good ideas, a lot, you know, some of them, you know, because it's 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 a it's a weird premise, um, and still one that I've. It may never it's it it may never be a completely solid premise. Uh, it's still elusive to me. I mean, I'm that's still the whole point fascinated of the number. by by it. Like I, I don't even know what it is. Like we've talked I mean, about it, it for years, but yeah, which which I think is the main draw. Where it's like, what does this mean? And so you yeah. have so I've I've got different stories that I've written, different story ideas where. You know, 173 can happen anywhere, and it can be anything. And uh, I mean, at work, um, there is a our, the shoes that we sell. They have specific box IDs to help make yeah. it easier to find. And there is one that always gives me trouble, whether it's a UPC or it's a you know it, it's missing its mate or whatever. And the box ID for that is 173. Mm-hmm. And and it's like okay, um, when. Uh, a friend of mine had moved into their new place. Um, they were having a Derby Day celebration or party or whatever, and I was invited over. Um, I was leaving work and putting the address into um, the in, in the navigation tool, 17.3 miles. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, just, just random things. And so, uh, so I'm like, you know, now here's this number. I mean, and, you know, even Pokemon Go. You know the CP of a majority of the of the creatures that I catch are CP one seventy three. So it's just, it's it's one of those things that is that is that I, I don't know. It's one of those things that you notice it a lot more because it has become a thing. Like yeah. it probably doesn't happen any more than any other things that happen. In your right, life. and but I and I you do, know yeah. that that number just sticks out like a sore thumb to you, or it may yeah. be relevant to some other sort of like yeah higher power I mean, it's, Who knows? It's, it's, and and it's it's a fun thing i'm not taking it as seriously as like you know the film the number 23 where it's just like everything that happens has some significance yeah, to yeah, the number yeah. 23 but uh it's a fun little thing and it gives me you know like you know i, I sent y'all the the random you know poster to inspire me to get back into it with the yeah. you know something is coming slash something is here and you know the, yeah, the yeah. shadow in the doorway and and the shadow is yeah, the yeah. number 173 so it's uh yeah it's um you know it's fun to get back into those things and hopefully within in the near future we'll start seeing more stuff come out and yeah, yeah. you know so fingers crossed yeah, 173 they're, they're, stories based on that number that is a big ask yeah i mean and so far i've got about i want to say 15 ideas That's, yeah 
I mean, it's, it's it's one of those things where the setup so far, at least for the creative process, is I've got a composition notebook. And the first five or six pages, depending on how many lines there are, um, is just the numbers one through 173. And so if I have a random idea for a story, I'll just flip open to one of those random first pages and be like, okay, this is going to be story number 75. And yeah, so, you know, Write that way, yeah. And that way, as I'm, you know, cause there, there is going to be an, an overarching sort of theme. There are going to be overarching characters. There's going to be, you know, other stories are going to have an impact on other stories, but they're not going to happen in sequential or linear order. Mm. So, you know, this, and, and it's a, it's another fun creative project where it's like, I don't have a time frame on it. You know, no, if no, I have an idea, no deadline, you know, it's just, yeah. So, which has That's helped me with the creative it. process a lot better. So looking forward to diving back into that world as well. Yeah. I think in, in terms of like that writing and stuff where I'd want to do it, I need to sort of have that more, sort of not scattergun approach but just kind of like have an idea you don't need to work on it but the idea is there so yeah. i need to be like that whereas i kind of ironically for someone who's doing so much at the minute i want to do one thing at a time so it's mm -hmm. like if i have an idea i'd want to get that idea out there and stuff i've even tried to sort of getting into like the camp nano rimo and stuff like that yeah um, yeah i've tried yeah. that a couple times but again it's like i think specific goals you know you have people who can work within those yeah, the, yeah. those parameters of you know okay do this and yeah. me i get to that rebellious where it's just like don't tell me what to do you yeah, know don't yeah. tell me what i need to do but i think that's <laughs> where the camp, one of those... the camp stuff is good because it's like it's not focus on one particular thing it's just do something every day for that month right like i think it was mine was more about sort of like i would write stuff down like take take notes and stuff or plan a story mm -hmm. like that would be what it was for but it just doesn't work out for me because i don't yeah. have that focus for it so well for me it's, it's it's i don't have that structure which i need to work mm -hmm. on uh because for me i get a story idea and i just i just put it out there and i feel comfortable with the raw story but, yeah but if that's not how you work best then that's not like you shouldn't change it if you work best by doing right. it the way you do it then you should always do it that way um well i need i definitely need like that's how i work best but i also need to modify it because yeah, yeah. you know I, I have had very constructive criticism where it's like go back read it backwards or you know take some time because you, know, you i tend to sometimes run on sentences every now and then and you know trying, trying to get the thought out be a bit more disciplined it's more with the, the editor, editing yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. fair enough so, but, uh, but no, it's been, you know, I mean, this past year and a half has definitely, you know, trying to, trying to take the good with the bad, uh, definitely trying to, you know, put in, you know, oh, I've got time, uh, or, you know, oh, here, here are things that needed to change, like my dietary habits, you know, yeah, here's yeah. a, here's, here's a pandemic to, <laughs> to keep you indoors at all times. So, I, you know, do don't think... go out, don't do the fast food thing cook for yourself <laughs> i do think and, and i know tom and myself has talked about it quite a bit is uh, in in some weird way this pandemic has been beneficial i mean in terms of sort of like discipline and finding things and trying different things and building up habits mm -hmm. and things like that i think it definitely has like um i mean for me it's yeah possibly getting a new job has definitely helped with that as well because i can have that structure now i have mm -hmm. set days and times that i work and then normal times <laughs> like yeah you know so it, it that, that that helps me personally I, I can't i tried to shift thing and it just doesn't work for me yeah <laughs> so well it's too it's too sporadic you can't really plan around it so you, no. you know the whole you know i always excuse me i always make the comment that the whole point of a schedule is not just knowing when you work but is yeah. being able to schedule around it and yeah, yeah. being able to you know knowing when you don't work and you know where i like me my my shifts you know normally i work mornings but this weekend i've been working nights i've been closing yeah, yeah. and uh which is fine so that i could do things like this but at the same time you know were i to work a nine to five then i'd be like okay I'm, I'm available to do this with people i'm available to do this with myself i'm available to you yeah, know yeah. oh i always people ask me it's like you know when are you working and i'm just like i work tomorrow okay so when 
I'll, I'll, I'll check before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm always, not going to worry about tomorrow and, and yeah. make myself feel bad because it's like, oh. But I, I always found I hated the, the late shifts because it's one of those things where, like, you're, you, you've obviously got it set where it's the morning, I can do this. Um, mm-hmm. But with when I was on the late starts, it was always like, what can I do in the morning? Nothing, because I've got to get ready for work. Like, it was, and I would yeah. just achieve nothing. Um, yeah, that's that's normally my my thing where I, I'll I'll I go to bed late because I know I watch TV <laughs> like that's it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty yeah. much. Yep, you got it. Yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> but it, it, but it's weird because like you said when we first started, like when we started talking, it was like you have five hours. It's like that's plenty of time to do stuff. But something mm-hmm. in your head goes no because if something goes wrong and I'm late for work, like. Yeah, and that's the yeah, that's the whole thing where I mean the the meme that goes around where it's like, you know, the weekend, you know, if you make a plan for the weekend, the rest of your time before that is waiting till that thing happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's me. I very I'm I'm I've gotten better as far as the social aspect, but you know, if I'm ever asked to go to or invited to do something with someone, the time before that is me mentally prepping. <laughs> for <laughs> for doing that thing and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know depending on what it is if it's just hanging out with someone then i can do stuff beforehand do traveling you know travel around do running errands and whatnot but uh if it's like a birthday party okay i have to set out you know okay uh at this time i'm gonna take my shower at this time i'm gonna you know yeah, and then yeah. i end up I'm like okay i, I don't want to do anything and possibly mess up my outfit because this is the outfit that i'm wearing for yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the party so i just sit here and then when my cat tries to sit on me, I'm just like, no, no, I can't get any cat fur on it. You know? Yeah, and I don't want to move because I might crease it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to have to so. respond to verbal cues only. Just go. Yeah, exactly. Leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. uh, that, yeah, I definitely feel that. But oh, no. right. <laughs> I don't. Yep. I think yeah. I think we've uh, reached a point. Um, where we're just rambling now and people are going to be yeah, yeah, so fine, uh, i think yeah i think we'll uh we'll call it here uh thank you for just agreeing to join me at short notice I absolutely appreciate it. it's always fun I enjoy to catch catching up, up anyway. with you yeah. yeah um obviously once tom's sort of ready to sort of start talking about like what did we say two weeks left so next yeah. time we record it will be finished it'll be over yeah Ooh. Yeah, maybe we'll have to have a chat with Tom then and get 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 a spoiler cast out promptly after that. Yeah, I think. make sure we've watched it. But um, yeah, I guess for for this episode uh, of Anywhere But Here, I've been Ant. I've been Andrew. Bye. Bye. <laughs>